friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using the Hello Bluebird Be Happy stamp set. So I've stamped out the images I'll be coloring on some Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. Today's coloring is going to be fairly quick and easy since I'm using a limited color palette here for these bees. I chose Y13, Y15, and Y17 for the yellow areas of their body. And I'm just shading them in the direction that they're facing. So this little guy, he's kind of tipped toward the left, so his shadows will go on the left. So I did those with the Y17 and then blend it out with the Y15 and saved a little room for the Y13. And then I even decided to add in a fourth shade, which is the Y11, just to make him look extra uh, dynamic since it's fairly simple coloring on today's card. Um, there's going to be a lot of yellow on the card, so I really wanted to make these bees shine against that background. So having that more dynamic coloring is just going to help them kind of lift off the page and be a little bit more vibrant against that yellow, you know, so everything's not just one note. So I'm coloring this little guy with his shading on the left as well, since he's also kind of faced towards the right, but his head is kind of tipped toward the left. And then this third little guy, I'm doing it on the opposite side, so his shading is more on the right hand side on his face. It's um, kind of even because he's facing forward for the most part, but his body is kind of shifted toward the right. So on him, I only used the darkest three shades on his yellow stripe because it's not very visible. And then I am also doing the honey in the jar with these shades as well. I just used the darkest three shades on the little droplets that are spilling out, but I did use the Y11 at the top. And then I'm going to add some rosy cheeks for them with the R11 and R20. Just doing a little oval shape with that R21 first. And then I'm going to go around the edges of that with the R11, which is going to soften it up and just help it fade into the rest of their face. And I thought it would be fun to have those rosy cheeks because, again, it just breaks up that yellow since there's going to be so much of it on today's card. But, um, you know, that's what happens when you're doing a card with honeybees, right? Um, so for the black areas of their body, I'm going to use some cool grays. I'm using C3, C5, and C7. You could also use the warm grays if you want, or the toner grays or neutral grays, whatever you have. I just feel like the cool grays read a little bit more black than the warm grays do. So that's why I decided to go with these shades. So I used the C7 first to color in the top of his head and all the rest of his stripes and also the little balls on the end of his antenna. I'm also coloring in the legs completely with that C7. And because those areas are kind of small, I went ahead and did two of them at once. Um, it is a good idea to work while your markers are still wet, just because they blend a bit easier that way, but I was able to kind of squeeze out two of them. <laughs> so I'll save the third one for in a minute here, but um, I'm blending that out with the C5 and just making sure to really scrub over the edge of that C7 and get that broken up so that it's soft and blending into the next shade so that everything is just really smooth and there aren't any harsh lines. And then I'll come in with the C3 and that's going to be my lightest shade. So I'll just fill in all of that highlighted area there. And do the same on the first B as well. I just love his expression. I think he's probably my favorite in this whole set just because his face looks so joyous. It just makes me smile. So I'm going to color in the antenna on my second guy and his little legs. And then I'll move on to my third little B. And again, doing the same exact coloring, but just switching up the direction of the shadows and highlights, 
based on the way that he is facing. So always adding that darkest color to the underside of the body because of course the light would be hitting on the top the most. And then also just a little bit in you know the opposite direction of the way that they're facing. So I'm gonna finish him off with that C3, just making sure everything is nice and blended. And then I'll move on to their wings. And I'm just gonna use one shade BG10 and add a few little flicks of color and let that fade into the white. I just want it to be really subtle because bees don't have blue wings, but you know, you wanna have a little bit of shading on there and not just leave them stark white because it just um, helps them kind of lift off the page like I've mentioned before and um, just come to life. I colored in the glass with the same shade and now I'm going over their eyes with a black Sakura jelly roll marker. And then I will add a little bit of a shine mark on the honey jar just to make it look, you know, more like glass. I did also add a few little specks to the wings to kind of break up some of that blue, but it's hard to see on screen. It's a little more visible in person. So now I'll just trim these out with their matching dies. For my background, I'm taking a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and I'm going to blend on some yellow Distress Oxide inks. I'm starting with Squeeze Lemonade and I'm basically going to cover this entire panel. I want it to look like the inside of a honeycomb. So I want it to be really vibrant, but I also want it to be lighter in the center and darker on the edges just to really pull your focus toward the center. At the beginning, I thought I might leave the center white, but then I decided that I didn't want to do that. So I will go back and fill that in in a bit. But I'm moving on to my second shade, which is Mustard Seed. And I'm gonna lay that on pretty heavily on those outside edges. I really want to get that golden honey glow that you know you think of when you think of a jar of honey, even though honey comes in lots of different shades. But um, I wanted something that was a bit more of that golden tone. So I'm gonna come on now with my third and final shade. This is Fossilized Amber. This one has just a bit more of that brown tone in it, so it's a bit more of a golden yellow. So I'm gonna come in on the outside edges one more time, laying that in, and then I'm going to work my way back down in the reverse order. So I'm using my mustard seed now, and then I'll come in with the um, squeezed lemonade in the center. And here is where I realized that the white center just was too much of a difference. I didn't want that much contrast. Plus it just didn't seem to look like honey if it had that white center. So I just filled that in completely with the squeezed lemonade, but I left it a little bit lighter there. So now I've die cut a second panel of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock with the Sunny Studio Frilly Frames Hexagon. There are two dies in that set. One does the outside border and the other one does the inner hexagon pieces. So I layered them up to create this design here and I just popped out all of the center pieces and I want to color this with the darkest of the shades. So I'm using that fossilized amber. And I'm just being really careful. I don't wanna bend any of these little pieces in the center. So I'm pouncing that on and um, adding that in kind of like a circular motion as well, but just being gentle. I'm not using like a really heavy pressure because I want that to uh, you know, stay really nice and pristine and not get wrinkly. Um, but I just want to coat that completely in this darker yellow so that it creates some contrast and some depth when it gets layered over the background piece. So once I have that done, I'm going to set that aside to dry. And I do want to add a little bit of uh, speckle detail on the back of the background panel. So I just pressed my um, ink pad onto my Waffle Flower Mini Media Mat, and then I watered that down and picked it up with a paintbrush, and then I'll just tap that against my fingers so I get all of those little speckles um, that just creates a lot of movement there. So I'll set that aside to dry as well. And in the meantime, I'm going to stamp my sentiment. 
I'm using Versafine Onyx Black ink and stamping Happy Bee Day. I just thought that was really cute with these images and also I always need birthday cards so I thought that would be perfect. And then I'm going to stamp on the inside of my card. I'm using a piece of Lawn Fawn's Sticky Note cardstock and stamping in Sunflower ink. I've really been loving this yellow cardstock lately and especially for this honeybee card I just thought it would be perfect. So I'm stamping the fourth B in the set that didn't make it to the front of the card and the sentiment that says, you're the bee's knees. And I did stamp that down a bunch of times to make sure that you could really see it against that yellow cardstock. So now I'm ready to start assembling my card and I'm going to begin by adhering this background piece to the front of my card. That's going to cover the entire front of a standard A2 size card. It is four and a quarter tall by five and a half wide. And then I've popped the outer edge of the hexagon print here up with some foam tape. I didn't bother with the center because I'm going to go ahead and pop up my bees on foam tape just to give them a little bit of lift as well. And it's really hard to cut down the foam tape thin enough to fit behind those small little pieces. So I just did it on the outside edges and you can see how that adds so much contrast against that background. So now I'm going to add my little bees. This first guy is going to be carrying his little jar of honey in. And then I have uh, the little one that's kind of coming down from the top. I'm gonna to put him towards the top left. And then this other little guy is gonna go down toward the bottom right. Now these two I didn't place down really firmly because I wasn't exactly sure where I wanted them. Um, I needed to figure out where I wanted this sentiment first and I did trim that down with the Lawn Fawn Everyday Sentiment Banners and then I added some foam tape to the back of that. I'm going to tuck it under this guy's wing just to kind of incorporate it into the scene a little bit more and then that made me want to just shift this bottom B a tiny bit so I just pulled him up and pressed him back down where I wanted him. I wanted to add a bit of glitter to the bee's wings just to give them that iridescent look. I was having a little trouble with this bottle of stickles. Um, it kept clogging on me, so I had to keep um, unclogging it over to the side with a needle. I've never had that problem with a bottle of stickles before. It just must have, I don't know, got <laughs> kind of a de defective bottle or something. But anyway, um, so I had to keep doing it after like each wing, but it was so worth it because I just love how it looks on those wings. Um, you'll see later when I kind of lift it up just how much sparkle it adds and just gives them that really um, iridescent look, like I said. So um, got that on there. And then I decided that I just needed a little extra something. So I pulled out a bunch of Pretty Pink Posh Sparkling Clear Sequins. I used the mix bag size and I'm adhering that with some Ranger Multimedia Matte. I was also having problems with this glue. Uh, it just didn't seem to want to come out of the bottle. So it took me a little while to get that kind of dotted here and there to add my sequins. And then I just used my Studio Katia a jewel picker to press those down into place. Um, this glue though, it is really great for things like this. A friend and I tested the some cards through the mail and this one did the best job on uh, you know keeping those sequins on there through the mail. So I really do like it, but um, it just tends to clog up on me and it's probably because I don't use it that often because uh, I don't usually add sequins to cards that often anymore, but for some reason I just thought that they would look really cute on this one and kind of fill in the spaces around the bees. So I added just a few here and there, and then once I was satisfied with uh, the amount, I decided to fill in the little holes in the center with some more Stardust Stickles. I think this would be really pretty with some gold stickles as well in the centers of those sequins, but I just decided to go with the same Stardust stickles that I already had out, and I really like how that turns out, especially once those stickles are dry and they look really sparkly. 
There you can see how that catches the light and there's another peek at the inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun creating it. I just love these bees and I think they're super sweet. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I post new ones every Monday and Friday. All of the products I used today will be listed and linked beneath the video in the description bar if you're interested in picking up any for yourself. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.